Hello, and welcome to the Fit News Podcast. I am your host, Jen Shaver, and joining me today is Dr. Meredith Butelis. She is a sports orthopedic physical therapist, exercise physiologist, NSCA certified strength and conditioning coach, and certified Pilates and yoga instructor. She's been in practice since 1998 and has serviced over 50,000 patient care hours. Her passion is helping people feel better through movement and exciting news. Meredith has a new book out. It is titled Your Wellness Makeover, Discover, Reflect, and Transform. So Meredith, welcome back to the Fit News Podcast. You have been a guest before, and I'm excited to have you back on today to chat about this new book. Well, the excitement is mine. Thank you for having me, Jen. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So let's get started. Let's talk about your new book. It recently released, correct? Um, it did, just uh, two weeks ago, actually. Yeah, so, it's and, and it's available. We can just go to Amazon, correct? Yeah, this one is uh, Amazon. It's both a paperback and an ebook. Okay, awesome. So can you share the inspiration behind writing your wellness makeover and kind of like what motivated you to create this transformative book? Sure. So I think a lot of times people hear physical therapy and they think, movement, almost like personal training, but maybe mm -hmm. with some medical diagnoses, which is somewhat true. Yeah. But a lot of times when patients discovered my background and they discovered it was a little bit more in depth and broad, they started asking a lot of questions that led into more holistic wellness. And they actually said, well, you should write a book or you should start a podcast mm -hmm. or you should do this or you should do that. So I figured a book is probably the easiest way that mm -hmm. people can access information on more holistic wellness mm -hmm. so that they can feel just better. Because in physical therapy, yes, we help with physical things, but that doesn't mean you're going to feel better. And I think a lot of people are looking for like, how do I feel better? And then they have trouble naming where to even begin or what's not mm -hmm. right inside. Right. Right. And and then also so often in physical therapy, we're just working on one particular um, imbalance or weakness, you know, um, right. my knee hurts. So we're, we're working on that. You know, I just had knee surgery. So we're working just on the knee. Right. And that is wonderful, but it's also <laughs> very limiting yeah. because like you said, it's just one area. Yeah. And there's so many other areas, not just physical, but just other areas of life we haven't thought about that might be influencing how we're feeling as humans. Right. Which is what is so great about your book, because it explores eight dimensions of wellness. Right. So I divide it into eight categories where people can think of it like a wheel of wellness. Mm -hmm. And if parts of it are a little bit deflated, you're going to have a very clunky wheel right. and you just get that sense in life, like something's off, but then you can't name it. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of get frustrated because you're just chasing all over the place, trying to figure out, well, which part of the wheel needs inflating, but I don't even know how to name the spokes on the wheel yet. So this just really decodes. What are those spokes on the wheel? Mm -hmm. Where are we at as individual people? And as an individual, what can we do to take one step forward to then inflate the smaller portions of the wheel. And it mm -hmm. becomes very individual because there's a lot of reflection and journaling that goes on in this. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's what I wanted to point out was it is, it's very, it, it allows you to not just read the book in a very broad sense, but really, um, you know, make it pertain to you and how it each piece fits into your wellness journey, because it, it is, it's very individualized. And the book allows you to feel each of those pieces as needed, right? Because not everybody's going to have the same pieces of the pie that are deflated, right? So right. Absolutely. This, this helps you to, to understand, you know, what parts you, you personally need to uh, work on. Right. I actually think, I wish I had called it a workbook because it really is more of a reflective workbook, but it's very guided. There's little stories mm -hmm. and it takes you on a little reflective journey and then it points out what you need to be attentive to. And then you actually end up creating your own action plan by the end of the book. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people think, well, how could a book be individual? This is a workbook style book. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's what's so nice. And like you said, at the end, you end up creating your own individual plan. So you walk away from this book not only learning, you know, something, you know, because you, you might read a book and you learn something, but you learn how to apply these things to fit your pers personal lifestyle. Yes, it's very, very individualized, which is really hard to imagine. But once you read it, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I definitely see that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's like, there's so, so what are some of the uh, eight dimensions that you mentioned throughout the book? Sure. I'm, I'm actually going to put out all eight of the dimensions okay. just so some people have yeah. awareness of what are these things I'm alluding to here yeah. and what categories could we put them in? Mm -hmm. So the general categories, I'm going to kind of rapid fire them here. Right. It, and they're in no particular order. I know mm -hmm. it's a wheel, but there's no specific order. So you have physical well-being, spiritual well-being, emotional well-being, occupational well-being, intellectual well-being, environmental well-being, financial well-being, and social well-being. Mm -hmm. And that's where we say are all eight spokes equal in life. But that doesn't mean some absolute value that we read on the internet. So for example, it doesn't mean we're going to be millionaires. <laughs> um, and you know, when, when you really think about the details of being a millionaire, I mean, maybe it's good and maybe it's not. There's, there's a lot of details that would go with that. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I love the holistic approach and each of those areas that you named, it, you know, it's like you said, if one of them is off, it's going to make a wonky wheel. And we don't realize the importance of all of those, you know, working together. Absolutely. And this, this book really sheds light on that. Mm -hmm. But uh, why don't we dive into, let's dig into one pie piece for the okay, audience here. let's do it. So p pick a pie piece, any pie piece. Um, let's do um, personal well-being. Personal well-being. Okay, let's break that down into a little bit more detail. Should mm -hmm. we go, we could go so many directions with this right now. <laughs> um, should we go physical well-being, uh, social well-being, occupational well-being, intellectual well-being. Yeah, let's go, let's go with, let's go with physical. Physical well-being. Okay. Well, first of all, at no point do I ever see eat broccoli and run a marathon, mm. even though that's right for some people. Yeah. So physical well-being, I think one of the topics we need to look at is definitely nutrition, right? Mm -hmm. We've all heard right. about nutrition and nutrition is different for each person. Right. So for example, Let's just take this a little bit more in depth here. Let's say I'm asking you about nutrition. You can mm -hmm. make up a hypothetical character or you can just answer from your real life. <laughs> it's all good. So what kinds of things in your nutrition plan right. make you feel well in general? Like you walk away from eating it and you're like, yeah, that was, that was really satisfying. I feel like that fuels me as a human. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely making sure that the plate is is balanced. You know, I know that when I eat, uh, you know, a balanced meal. What does that mean for me? It means having my, you know, prioritizing that protein, having those vegetables in there to get that fiber, you know, and then having that, uh, you know, about amount of carbs. Now, we all know that if we, you know, head to, um, I'm not going to throw out a fast food name, I'll just say any fast food place, right? And we have a meal. After it, we kind of feel bleh right? We just have a, a just a heavy, just ugh, feeling. So I think, you know, finding, we all know what's good for us to eat, right? Most, most of the time. <laughs> I mean, right, right. So I think we all kind of have that, you know, well, I, I know what I'm supposed to eat, but then there are days when we might eat something that's, you know, a little less design, you know, on the, um, less nutritious. How's that? Right. And the older I get and the more I have switched my eating to focusing more on protein, fiber, and, you know, the good stuff, quote unquote, I don't like to label foods good and bad, but it, you know, for the sake of understanding here, the more I have switched and focused on that and having that more the harsher that other stuff feels 
when I have it. Absolutely. So this really ties into how we feel about certain things and not necessarily classifying. So for example, the other day I, I discovered dates. I'd actually never eaten dates in my life. Yeah. And I was like, you know, these have certain health benefits to them. They're you know, high in fiber and it's contributing to the rainbow of foods and it has many, it's a natural thing. And I used them in a recipe with oats. And I was like, this could be great. You know, add a little more fiber to the diet. <laughs> They're very tasty. <laughs> and uh, I discovered that after I ate a whole pile of protein balls made of dates, I was more hungry than when I started. <laughs> like, okay, this is not the desired outcome that we are going <laughs> for here. But one thing that we can look at is, you know, how does what we are putting in support our energy levels and what we're trying to do? Yeah. Because if we're trying to eat a perfect textbook or eat only food groups, but yet our energy is crashing. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows? Maybe you're somebody who needs Reese's cups to get by, but if that's the only thing you're eating, then we're going to start seeing some of those crashes. Mm -hmm. So this takes people on a little bit of a reflection, not just like, what are you eating? Is it a food group? Does it look like the rainbow? Does it look like the plate? But how is it making you feel in life? Because if you're continually falling asleep at your desk or crashing your energy or going to a supplement just to get by, uh -huh. then that's an area of the wheel that's actually a little deflated. Right. right. Now, right. Some, some people can eat M&Ms all day long and they feel great. And I'm yeah. like, all right, more power to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, you know, if, if somebody hears, well, you know, you, you should be eating you know, they followed some influencer who said you should have broccoli every day. Well, if you're eating broccoli and it's not agreeing with you, then that might, you know, you shouldn't continue to do it because somebody else told you to do it. So it's, it's, again, it's, it's going back to, like you said, listening to your body's needs. Right. And that's what this dives into is it really gives pan people a chance and a space to mm -hmm. think about not just, you know, what did somebody else tell me? What do I know is good? What did I learn in school? What did I learn from a coach? But how is that being internalized and processed by your own human? Because just because it's perfect for somebody else doesn't mean it's right for everybody. Yeah. And that's what's so important is that we need to recognize that each of us is an individual and, you know, we are going to all of these things are going to affect us individually, right? And so we might be able to do all of the things that, you know, you read in this magazine that said, do this, mm -hmm. and it might be working great for you, but you shouldn't feel like a failure if it's not. No, absolutely not. And let's take a little bit more into this one. So physical well-being, yeah. you know, we, we know about exercise, we know about nutrition, we all have experiences with that, but let's just look at something like sleep efficiency, because I think mm. that one's underrated. Oh my gosh, It has gosh, a yes. lot to do with physical well-being, and I think mm -hmm. listeners can take things away even just listening to this with this one. So sleep efficiency is not necessarily how many hours of sleep we get because I realize we can talk about hours of sleep being ideal and the average adult needs seven to nine, but yeah. for some people that's just not going to happen. Yeah. They're, they're working two jobs. They're a mom with a kid on top of that. You know, they're yeah. a dad with a kid and there's, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So I look at it from a perspective of sleep efficiency because you don't necessarily need more hours in bed you need to be more efficient with those hours. Mm -hmm. So we've actually been trying this in our own lives right now here. And we're saying, what is making an impact? And I'll try something and we'll try it together with my partner and we'll see, and then we'll compare and I'll say, hey, I felt this way. How do you feel about it? And we'll compare. So some of the things we've tried, 30 seconds of stretching before we went to bed. Uh-huh. And we actually did partner stretches. So yeah. like I have my favorite forward fold where he kind of like pushes on my back and yeah. smushes my back and he likes <laughs> his hamstring stretched. And we discovered even this 30 seconds that we spend with each other in, in this huge busy day was changing our sleep, sleep efficiency. And we actually monitored it on our phones. We had a little experiment with ourselves and um, we said, okay, so now we're getting 15 more minutes of sleep on average because yeah. it tells you how long you stay asleep. <gasps> and uh, so we looked at that data and we're like, that's that seems nice. And yeah. then we heard, okay, you know, magnesium is good for you. And I mm -hmm. said, well, I don't like taking magnesium by mouth because the next day I feel like I'm drunk. So this is, <laughs> this is not going to work out. So let's try magnesium spray here. And so 
put it on the feet and the calves. And I go, well, it didn't change my sleep efficiency, but it changed my perception of sleep because my feet stopped twitching in the middle of the night. So if my feet stop twitching in the middle of the night, I get better sleep and he gets better sleep. So oh. bonus, we'll keep the magnesium. Right. And I then mean, we just, try- just right there, just those two things, right? Mm-hmm. 30 seconds. Who doesn't have 30 seconds? Absolutely. And then the spray, yep. which doesn't take any time. No, and I bought mine on, I think, Amazon for about $8. Yeah. So, and it is yeah. a giant bottle. It's going to last the whole year. Yeah. This, I mean, and that's amazing. Mm-hmm. It, that it, is it, amazing. Those are just two small changes. Absolutely. Oh and then we gosh. found we found one other really, really, really big one. Um, so I'm in Florida now, and Florida's mm-hmm. kind of toasty. But <laughs> recently we had a cold front. So yeah. we actually had a blanket, a pretty substantial heavy blanket. Mm-hmm. And we said, okay, let's put this on the bed. And then we kind of curled up in the blanket. We're like, this is nice. And I looked at my sleep data the next day. It had increased by an hour of efficiency. I didn't have an hour an longer hour. in bed. It increased by an hour of efficiency. <gasps> That's amazing. And, yeah. And then we tried it again and it stayed that way. We tried it again and it stayed that way. And so it's amazing. And I think of it, a lot of it has to do with the weight of the blanket. We hear about weight weighted blanket. blankets. Yes. And so now it's warming up again in Florida. And I said, you know what? That blanket is not coming off the bed. So we could take off the lighter blankets, but yeah. that blanket has weight to it. And that blanket has done something very positive. So that blanket is going to have to stay, even if it's only on my side of the bed. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. I mean, I, you know, we've all heard, you know, well, weighted blankets are good for you, but to actually see the data for yourself and to experience it. And like you said, you didn't add time in bed. It no, didn't, not at you, all. You weren't taking Probably less. <laughs> yeah. time, you know, you weren't taking away time from your day. Mm-mm. That's amazing. And sleep is something that is so, you know, underrated for its health benefits. It is. And I will say it is a game changer. Yeah. So, a lot of people say, well, no, I didn't sleep last night and I was totally fine. I was actually wired the next day. I was great. And I'm going to ask you what happened two weeks later. Mm-hmm. And, and people don't think, they don't connect what happened two weeks ago. Right. And for adults, usually that crash doesn't show up till two weeks later. So, um, and we also don't really account for chronic sleep deprivation. And and this gets into, I know a lot of um, women and men, you know, after 40, you get a lot of hormonal imbalances, you don't mm-hmm. process blood sugar very well, your cholesterol goes super high. Those are natural things that happen, but there's a lot of data that shows us how sleep is the repair mechanism. It is mm-hmm. the regulation. And we can try to throw all kinds of supplements at this and all kinds of band-aids at it. And some are good at some times, but if we're living on supplements and band-aid solutions, at some point there's gonna be cracks in the walls and the foundation crumbles out. Right. And you just gotta go back and say, well, now what am I supposed to do? And you might say, well, I haven't slept more than four hours in 10 years. Um, it, it can be repaired, but yeah. It's, it's going to take time. It's, it's a long game, but these little tiny changes make the long game much, much faster. Right. Right. And again, it's, you know, like you said, these little tiny changes, that's where really the magic happens. Absolutely. The small changes, because that's what leads to long term success. Absolutely. And I always ask people with this wheel that we're talking about with all the different dimensions of wellness and even in the book, Mm -hmm. I say, what is the tiniest, smallest thing you can do in this dimension? And I give some examples to help people get their brains started. Mm -hmm. But and like I have here, but what I find is that people pick something and then they come up with all the excuses as to why they can't do it. Right. And my answer back is if you are answering yourself with excuses, the action was too big. Oh, I love that. And it has to be broken down. And you might say, well, that's ridiculous. It's already small. It's already, I'm going to eat one serving of vegetables every day. I'm like, all right, well, don't start with a serving then. Start with a spoonful. And you are like, well, that's ridiculous. Of course I can eat a spoonful. You know, I, I go to the cabinet and I eat a spoonful of peanut butter every night. I'm like, all right, well, just open up the jar of peas and eat a, eat a spoonful of peas with your peanut right. butter. <laughs> right. Well, I'm, but I mean, it's true. And I think that, again, just as we were saying, you know, before that sleep is underrated, small changes are underrated because that's where we're able to create consistency. Mm-hmm. is with the small changes no matter how i mean we think that all of this stuff has to be done overnight and it doesn't 
Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why sometimes, you know, we, you know, we want to eat the elephant in one bite. Well, or, you know, you know, all all at once. And and it, it doesn't happen like that. You have to eat it in tiny little pieces if you want it to last, you know, you want Absolutely. these changes to stick. If you want them to become, become a part of your lifestyle, it has to be a small change. That way you don't even realize you made the change once it's, That's, you know, there you go. <laughs> become a part of your daily routine. That's the key. And the example I like to give people, because we can all relate to this one is, especially because we probably did this when we were kids is you know, when you're a kid, your mom says, your mom, dad says, you're going to the dentist. What do you do? You immediately grab the toothbrush and you start scrubbing for the next five <laughs> minutes, right? right? To try to make up for the fact that you didn't actually brush your teeth for two minutes a day for the past six months. <laughs> Does it work? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the dentist still scratches a bunch of stuff off your teeth and tells you you got a cavity. <laughs> so it's the same way in life. You know, there's cavities in the wheel because we've been doing one thing for so long in one way that mm -hmm. our bodies just got used to that. And we just kind of were like, okay, this is okay. This is okay. And then one day it's not. And we say, well, I did it this way for the past 20 years. So why should I change? And I'm going to ask, are you happy with the outcome? And if you don't feel happy and well and fulfilled, then we need to look at these eight dimensions of wellness and say, where's the hole? Right. Where's the hole that we need to plug and realize it is the tiniest little minute action that you can't even say no to because it's so easy to do that you feel ridiculous saying no. Mm -hmm. That's the action that you want. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's what's going to, you know, get the wheel turning you know, all together, right? Not absolutely wobbly. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Is there anything else, Meredith, you think uh, we need to add in there? Well, let me let me take you on a little intellectual wheel tour yeah. turn for a minute here. So there's another yeah. pie piece called intellectual, mm -hmm. which is how are we refilling our cup? Because so many people are just natural givers that we want to give our talents over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. But we just <laughs> never take time to refill our cup. So yeah. here's what I'm going to ask you and the audience. You can mm -hmm. answer if you like, or you can make yeah. a hypothetical answer. <laughs> um, what are your top three favorite podcasts? Oh, wow. Um, I, I, well, goodness, I listen to... I like Mind Pump. Okay, Mind Pump. I, I like um, Deborah Adkinson does one, Flipping 50. Um, and then I there's another one that I really like, um, Gretchen. Um, hold on. The Work in Between with Gretchen Norling is is another one of my uh, is another one of my favorites. For, and you didn't why didn't you name your own podcast? This should have been right up there. <laughs> 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 well, you know. <laughs> all right, all right. So, what makes you listen to them? They keep me engaged, and I like. I, you know, it's it's almost like the same thing with with my podcast. Why I love it is I love talking and learning from other people. So when I'm listening to those podcasts, I feel like I'm learning something. See, we refill our intellectual cup. Mm -hmm. And for people listening to this podcast, obviously you like podcasts to some extent. So yeah, right? <laughs> I, I'd encourage you to think like, try try out a couple podcasts. Like obviously stay tuned into the ones you love, but maybe once in a while try a different one and just mm -hmm. see with an open mind, like what can you learn and how would that contribute to refilling your cup? And how does that carry over into how you are refueled to interact with other people? Mm -hmm. And I would say the same about books. So some people are a little bit more book people. Right. Um, some people love podcasts and books. Yeah. So think about like what three books do you want to read this year? So let's say you're not a reader, you know, pick one book for the year and realize with books, with podcasts, I think sometimes people think they have to finish them in one sitting. And I know my book wasn't designed for a single sitting. It was designed mm -hmm. that you spend 10 minutes with one chapter and move on with your day. And then mm -hmm. while you're sleeping, some of the stuff will show up in your subconscious and then it'll start tumbling out in your wake week and you won't even know it's there. Yeah. Same with podcasting. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be one episode all at once. I think sometimes mm -hmm. people say, I don't have an hour to listen. Okay, well, just try 10 minutes while you're driving to the gas station. Start right. that. Right, right. And I think that's so important what you said, you know, the chunking out the 10 minutes, right? Especially if, you know, when we're talking about your book, 
that's going to improve someone's life. You know, let's take 10 minutes just to kind of read through this, work on this area. It's 10 minutes. You just spent 30 minutes scrolling somewhere. <laughs> yes. So yes. instead of doing that, let's take the 10 minutes, right? And, you know, maybe it's 10 minutes before bed. Maybe it's, maybe you do it during commercial breaks while you're watching TV. Mm-hmm. Right. Because you know? it doesn't have to be a continuous 10 right. minutes. Right. You know? And it's, it's a question. If people don't have 10 minutes to invest in their own lives, I, I have some questions um, right. in general. So right. I'm like, okay, no matter what your circumstances are mm -hmm. and no matter how you do it, if you don't have 10 minutes every day to invest in your own life in some way, shape or form, I have questions. Yeah. You know, and the thing that I used to always do when my kids were doing sports was I would keep a book in my car. Because that way, when I showed up to pick them up from practice and practice was always running late, that's when I could read. Yes. You know? And it was yes. just such a, it was that's, you know, or when I, when, when I had to pick them up after school and sit in that darn pickup line, you know? Oh, yep. Yep. We have them here too. It was just like, okay, pack the book because this is your time to read. You, you have to sit there. So rather than sit there and scroll sit there and read something, you know, that's going yes. to improve your life. Yes. Yes. That's like the take home message right there. And I'm going yeah. to take that idea because yes. that's going to stop me from buying stupid stuff on Amazon that I actually didn't need in my house. <laughs> and then you get home and you're like, I ordered a uh, pink unicorn socks. Really? <laughs> Where did this come from? The Amazon guy is here. Again. We're all guilty of that one. What's he bringing me today? I don't even remember. Right? Yes. So yes, reading the book in the car, I'm actually yeah. going to tie those two things together now in my yeah. own life. I'm going to take that suggestion and that way I won't end up with like a random plunger with cat yeah. ears on it. And I'm like, really? <laughs> it might be kind of well, cute though, you know? <laughs> oh. So once again, Meredith, this book is available on Amazon, correct? This and, one is, yeah. There's okay. a, and there's a free look inside too. So for people that say, oh gosh, what were those eight dimensions of wellness again? Mm -hmm. The free look inside actually does list out the dimensions. Mm -hmm. So you can actually at least have some concept but mm -hmm. to actually read the book and go through the workshop and all the pieces that's that's yeah. in the hidden content that's not in the preview yeah yeah and again it is called your wellness makeover discover reflect and transform and it's by dr meredith butilis and i'm going to spell that last name just in case um you know so when they're looking it up it's b-u T U L I S. So make sure that you head on over to Amazon before you go to pick up your kids or, you know, wait at the doctor's office, right? This was, that was oh. the other thing. I knew that if I had an appointment somewhere that the book was in the car and I could take that with me. So just put the book in your car, you know, how much time you spend sitting in your car waiting for this, that, or the other ladies. I know, I know. So don't tell me you don't. <laughs> <laughs> True, true. <laughs> All right. And Meredith, where else can our listeners find you? It, probably one of the easiest ways is on Instagram. It's okay. if, because that way you don't have to spell my name. Okay. So <laughs> it's doc MNB, which are my initials. So it's D-O-C mm -hmm. and then the dot, little dot. Mm -hmm. And then my initials M. N B. Mm -hmm. And if people do want to send me an instant message, I am happy to send them one chapter of their choosing for free. So oh, wow. if they say, wow, I really wish I had the chapter on environmental wellness, because I know you meant a whole lot more than bringing my own bags to the store. I'm like, yep, I meant a whole lot more. There's a lot more to this story. Um, you know, pick, pick your favorite chapter and I can send that to you yeah. um, if you'd like, but oh, no, no charge, just, just a gift. Yeah. That is a deal. Ladies, if you do not take advantage of that, we need to chat. <laughs> that is a deal. Uh, thank you, Meredith. We appreciate that offer. And we appreciate you taking the time again to be in the, a guest for a second time on the Fit News Podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me, Jen. I appreciate it. And I really hope the audience at least takes some of the pearls that we shared to yeah. heart, whether that's yeah. reading in your car or whether that's just changing your sleep efficiency. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's, especially the midlife ladies, we all know that they are having trouble sleeping and yes. sleep has a big impact on your weight, your weight loss and your weight gain and your weight maintenance. So ladies, let's fix that sleep. Mm -hmm. For sure. If you take nothing else away, at least start there. Yep. <laughs>
Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for listening to the Fit News Podcast. We will catch you next time.